Um, we're going to start off. So uh, first of all, um, on behalf of the Leeds Community Foundation and Gib Bradford, good afternoon and a very warm welcome to this Open Grants Briefing webinar. Before we get started, I just want to make you aware that the session is being recorded and obviously we'll be sharing um, the recording afterwards with people that can't make it today. Uh, if you do have a mobile phone as well uh, nearby, can you please put it on silent um, and also keep your mic muted until we get to the Q&A session, which is happening at the end uh, of the presentation. Uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Chahid Malvi, I'm Head of Grants. Uh, I have oversight and overall responsibility for the grant making function at the foundation. And I also have a small and hardworking team uh, that work on and deliver the various grant programs, some of which we'll be talking about uh, later on. So I'm just gonna ask the team to introduce themselves. So Maria, do you wanna go first? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Maria Spadafora and I'm one of the grant managers. I couldn't hear you very well, Maria. I don't know. That's just me or oh right, okay. I might I... grab <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, much better. Okay, I'm Maria Spadafora, one of the grant managers. Mm. Is it just me or is that mic dropping out for everybody? Rachel? Yeah, it's dropping out slightly. It is dropping out, right? right? Okay, I'm going to grab a microphone. <laughs> okay, all right, I'll come back to you. Uh, Lydia, you want to go next? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Lydia Baldwin. I'm also one of the grants officers. And Laurie? Hi, everyone. I'm Laurie Cummins, and I am also one of the grants officers at LCF. Yeah, we have, we have another grants officer who's on annual leave today called Alex. Um, but um, she's not here today. But we do have a couple of colleagues from our comms team. So maybe um, Jess and um, Rachel. Jess, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jess Johnson. I am Communications Officer here at Leeds Community Foundation. And Rachel? Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel. I'm Senior Events and Communications Officer um, at Leeds Community Foundation in Give Bradford. Okay. And Maria, are you back with the mic? Testing, testing. Testing. Yeah, it works. You hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yes, perfect. Right, I've had to plug a microphone in. Sorry, I think there's an issue with my laptop. Uh, anyway, I'm Maria. I'm one of the grants officers. Hi, everyone. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Right, so I'm going to start off with some background information about the foundation and also, um, you know, how we do our grant making and the reporting process and how that works. So you have a clear idea of what to expect when you start applying. So... Uh, just some background, Leeds Community Foundation and Give Bradford is an independent grant making organisation. We're one of 47 community foundations across the country. Uh, taken together as a network, we would be classed as the fourth largest grant maker in the UK. And regionally, across the Yorkshire and Humber, we're the largest independent funder. Uh, we tend to give out, as the slide says, around £4 million worth of grants uh, in a year, and that was last year's figures, supporting just shy of 500 organisations. And the community foundation model uh, involves us raising money from a variety of different sources. We get money from public sector, private sector, some charities, trusts, foundations, uh, high net worth individuals, etc. And what we do is we just invest that money through our various grant programs that we run across Leeds and Bradford uh, in order to make a positive change in communities. So as well as the funding, we also provide um, additional resources and support to help community groups uh, to deliver their various projects. Increasingly, we've also started doing unrestricted funding for organizations, and we tend to support core costs as well as project costs um, since a couple of years ago. Uh, especially through our Leeds Fund and Bradford Fund programs, uh, we have supported groups directly with their development plans. Uh, we've run kind of training workshops and also facilitated uh, peer support sessions as well. Moving on to the next slide, Rachel, please. Uh, this is just our mission statement and values, which um, underpins all our work. Uh, we believe in creating opportunities for all through our programs, and, and some of these values are really important to us. So being inclusive, being fair, being honest and transparent. Um, and also in the current climate, some sections of society uh, might see themselves as being left behind. But we try to give a little bit of hope uh, through securing funds and working with our donors, partners, and community groups like yourselves to create that positive change in communities and meet the most pressing needs. So 
So we're moving on to the next slide, which is about the application process. So it's pretty straightforward to apply to our website. Uh, you'll find the fund criteria and the links to our online application forms when you go to our open grants page on the website. Uh, do make sure that you read the guidance thoroughly and check that you're eligible before applying. Uh, we also now have a eligibility checker on our website as well, uh, where you can double check, especially if it's your very first application for LCF uh, and with Bradford, then I'd recommend you doing that. Um, you'll also obviously, when you get to filling the form out, uh, you will need to be concise in your answers because uh, you'll find that some of the boxes have got word limits on them, like 250 words or 500 words on some of the questions. Uh, but the good news is that you can also save your application as a draft and come back to it. So it's not a case that you have to sit down and complete it in one sitting. Uh, it's absolutely fine. You can kind of save it, come back to it, and then obviously submit it when you're ready ahead of a fund deadline, obviously. Um, and if you're unclear on anything uh, when completing the form or you want to talk about your project before you put pen to paper or wish to discuss anything at all, you can contact one of the team and we'll try and help you best we can. And so once you've submitted the form, you will get a, a confirmation of receipt uh, and then your form will go for assessment by one of the team. So moving on to the eligibility criteria. So there's some standard criteria um, that we apply across all our funds. Uh, you'll find that some funds may also have some additional project related criteria uh, that you need to meet to be eligible. So some might be, you know, you, you have to be working with young people. It might be a young, young person's fund, for example, or if there might be a geographical uh, criteria in there saying that this is, this is funding just for Bradford or this is just for Leeds or it could be for both. So do look out for that. But these are the kind of standard eligibility criteria that we expect of all applicants. So you need to be a not-for-profit organization or a social enterprise. You can't be a, a private company, for example, or a statutory organization. And you need to have at least three trustees, uh, directors or management committee members who are independent and related, um, and none of whom should have more than 50% control of the voting rights or kind of decision-making in the organization. Uh, you'll also need a governing document, which is basically a constitution, a memorandum of articles. It's basically a rules that show how your group is managed and how decisions are made, etc. You know, that it's democratic. Uh, but please also do check the eligibility in terms of uh, incorporation and, and, and registration status on the criteria document as well. Uh, we do have certain uh, rules around uh, unincorporated groups, for example. There might be a limit in terms of how much funding we can give or, or for, you know, for what. So some unincorporated groups will work from salaries, for example. But that'll be all in the criteria documents, so I'd, I'd advise you kind of go through that thoroughly. Um, you'll also need a bank or building society account in the name of your organization with a minimum of two unrelated uh, signatories, and then some idea of your finances. So um, ideally accounts, if you have them, or even a record of income and expenditure for your group, uh, just to kind of give us an idea that you've got a bit of a track record in terms of managing your finances and you know, you're not about to go bust next week or anything like that. Uh, but obviously if you are a new group, you won't have that, but um, you can then provide us with a bank statement and a project budget and we'll look at it. Um, and obviously safeguarding is pretty important uh, to us as well at the foundation. So if your project involves working with children or adults that are deemed at risk, then we will need to see the safeguarding policy and that, that it's up to, up to scratch. Okay, moving on to decision making. So for each of our funds, we convene a grants panel uh, to make decisions on the grants um, that have been submitted and then assessed by one of the team. Uh, so we don't make any decisions on the grants. Uh, we present our assessment and expert opinion on the applications to the panel um, as a set of panel papers. Um, and then the, the panels are, are made up of, um, you know, a number of different uh, representatives, there might be the funder or the donor of that fund will sit on the panel, there'll be various kind of partners and other stakeholders. There's usually community reps on there, people from community groups or uh, community people with lived experience of that particular issue or theme that the fund is considering. It's usually chaired by me or by one of the other kind of managers within the foundation. And the grant officer who did the assessments is usually there at the panel as well. They're there to take the minutes and the kind of record the decisions and the feedback that the panel give, uh, but also to respond to any questions and queries that the panel might have about the applications. And the decisions that are made, um, you know, through majority voting and consensus uh, of the panel. Um, there's usually quite an in-depth discussion and debate at the panel process. 
um, they provide kind of wonderful insight and feedback on the applications. And this is, you know, shared back as, as far as possible with the applicants when we get to communicating the decisions to them after the panels met and the decisions have been made. And the final slide for me is on reporting. So for the majority of our grants, which last for up to a year, we have our standard end of grant monitoring form that we ask all our grant holders to complete. Um, and obviously we'll tell you when the kind of monitoring is due uh, as, as part of the funding process. Uh, sometimes when it says end of grant report, people tend to be, or, or people are kind of tempted uh, to leave this kind of thing to the end of the project. They don't really think about it. Uh, but I think it's really important that you should carefully consider it at the application stage, right at the outset. You know, what outcomes will you be achieving? Because you will be asked about this. So, you know, what outcomes will you be achieving? How will you be measuring and demonstrating the impact that your work's had? Uh, we want this to be a useful exercise you know, for you guys so that you can also grow and get better as an organization. So, you know, we, we recognize that things can happen while you're trying to deliver a project. Things don't always go to plan. We're interested in what worked, but also what didn't go so well. You know, what did you learn? What would you potentially do differently if you had another opportunity? So, you know, we don't want like a polished uh, end of grant report, which is kind of all singing and all dancing with bells and whistles on it. We want the kind of warts and all as well. Uh, and, and that's perfectly fine because we're, we're really interested in, in, in what you learned as an organization as well. And you can use a variety of different tools and approaches to capture the impact and learning of your projects. Uh, some organizations use kind of case studies. Uh, you could potentially run a survey or, or questionnaire like a before and after or you could capture some quantitative or qualitative data. Uh, you could potentially record a short video or get quotes from some of the participants that took part in your projects. And, you know, uh, just make sure that you've obviously got the necessary permission uh, to share any of this. So I think that's it from me. So I'm gonna hand over to Maria, who will take you through some of the grant programs that are open at the moment. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, before we move on, Shahed, we've had a question from Michael, who says their not-for-profit group has a constitution based on a CABAD model. Um, so I don't know if you want to pick that up, Shahed, or shall I? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I, I, can, I, I can pick that up in the chat, but, you know, right. I'll probably have to have a look at it anyway. Perfect, thank okay. you. Right, okay. We're going to move on. I'm going to talk about six programs. So the first one is Bradford Microgrants, Bradford Fund Microgrants. Um, this fund is about covering core costs for organisations to encourage that more strategic development alongside daily delivery of whatever it is your organisation does. And we, we hope that this fund will be able to enable organizations to reflect on their successes, identify priority issues, that sort of long-term thinking around resilience and identifying objectives. Uh, the grants available are unrestricted and between 500 and 2,500 ac across one year, and that's Bradford only. And that funding can be used to support development work, that might be around um, organizations' missions, vision, value, culture, um, exploring challenges and opportunities, reviewing governance. Um, so quite a wide, wide range of things that that could be used for. And the round for that particular fund closes on the 5th of October at 12 noon. The second program we're gonna share with you is Flint Family Fund. Um, so this fund aims to work with organisations who support children and young people, and that's around either improving literacy and numeracy or using sport and movement projects to increase physical activity, mental health, well-being and increase aspiration. The fund can be used to cover core costs and the grant sizes are between two and a half thousand up to five thousand for one year or 5,000 to 10,000 over two years. And that fund is limited to leads only. So the types of activities that can be funded are sports leadership programs, alternative sports, mental health and wellbeing projects, higher education focused projects, homework clubs, 
social action, lots of different things. So as usual, we encourage you to look at the criteria. The round for that particular programme closes on the 28th of October at 12 noon. Next up, we've got Leads Together for Ukraine. Uh, this fund was created from the Leads Together for Ukraine appeal and it responded to the humanitarian crisis that we're all obviously aware of around supporting Ukrainian refugees. This fund is aimed at organisations who already have knowledge, experience and skills to support new refugees. Uh, the grant size is up to £10,000, that's over one year and it's leads only. There's an expression of interest form for this particular programme. Um, so you would first need to complete that expression of interest. And then if it meets the criteria, you'd be invited to submit a full application. The types of activities that can be funded include things such as integration, access to local services, improving social connection, things like English language skills support, um, supporting people to seek employment, education, um, as well as kind of more general health well and well-being. Um, so quite a wide range of support that can be offered there. Um, the expressions of interest close on the 12th of September, which is next week, and the full application deadline is the 10th of October. So next up, we've got Wesley and Large Grants. This fund aims to support organisations with projects around education, health and social priorities. The grant size available is between £2,000 and £10,000. That's for one year and covers leads only again. The activities that can be funded are around developing career opportunities, promoting health and wellbeing, promoting community cohesion, bereavement support, befriending, and social prescribing, excuse me. And uh, yeah, again, a wide range of um, types of activity and support that can be funded there. And again, there's a full list on the criteria document. There are some very specific requirements for this fund. So please read the criteria document carefully to make sure you are eligible and that your project fits the parameters of this particular fund. Um, so applications need to ensure that no more than 10% of the project costs are for core and operational costs. And the amount that can be requested, this is relating to the project costs. Uh, sorry, I'm getting confused here. <laughs> um, so the amount that can be requested can't be more than 20% of the organisation's annual income. So, so do check that criteria because I've not explained that very clearly there. Um, and do, do make sure that your application is eligible before submitting. So do check your sums. Uh, oh, sorry. And yet the round closes on the 21st of October at 12 noon. Next up, we've got Jimbo's Fund. And this particular programme has been running for quite a long time. It was set up by a local businessman. Jimmy Hesseldon uh, to support people experiencing hardship in East Leeds in particular. Uh, grants of 1,000 to 20,000 are available and that can be used to support organisations working for the benefit of disadvantaged people in Leeds, particularly those in East Leeds, but people from wider Leeds are welcome to apply. Um, applicant organisations must be established for at least two years and have a track record in the area. And applications need to clearly demonstrate that they are supporting people who are experiencing a hardship or disadvantage. We're also mindful at the moment that many community organisations will be supporting people or certainly starting to support people around a range of issues resulting from the cost of living crisis. Um, and your applications need to be responding to an identified need. So do make sure you do that consultation. And we'd like to see tan tangible results as well. Um, it's worth noting as well that Jimbo's is always heavily oversubscribed. 
Um, so do make sure you kind of like thoroughly prepare your application before you submit it. Um, we are aware of how much work goes into applications and, you know, want you to um, basically make sure your application is eligible before you submit. Um, the fund opens on the 8th of November and the deadline is the 6th of January 2023. Decisions for that particular programme will be circulated around March 2023. Um, I will also just add that um, the criteria for that particular programme is still in development. So everything I've just said is to be confirmed, although it seems quite likely. <laughs> Right, one more programme from me, and that's the Sir Ken and Lady Morrison Fund. Now, the focus of this fund is on building literacy, and we're really keen to hear from applicants that are working in Bradford, um, who are exploring different ways to engage and support young people, families, carers, adults experiencing disadvantage all around their reading and writing. Their amounts available are between 5,000 and 10,000 pounds, and that can be over one or two years. And at the kind of activities, the applications should be focused on improving literacy, as I've said. So that might be children and young people, that might be um, young adults up to the age of 25 who might have a support need um, or be care leavers. It might be adults who've experienced disadvantage. It might be focused on parents and carers and looking more at families. Um, and the, the funders like to see that kind of support and encouragement to bring people together to improve their literacy overall. Um, applications for this programme really need to demonstrate that they're addressing a specific need in their community. And we're looking to fund projects that provide real tangible impact uh, but are obviously keen to hear your ideas so we funded quite a diverse range of projects in the past and um, the deadline for this is also next week the 15th of September I'm now going to hand you over to Lydia thanks everyone thank you Maria um, hi everyone I'm going to talk through our final two funds now um, and the first one of those is the PFG Manjit Wollstone Home Fund. Um, so this fund is already open and all the details are currently on our website where you can make an application. And the deadline to apply for this fund is the 30th of September. So it's, it's coming up shortly um, and we would advise that you start an application as soon as possible if you are interested, just to ensure you've got plenty of time um, these grants are available for Bradford based groups only, and they are grants of between five and ten thousand um, pounds. And so a bit on the themes of the fund, the uh, PFG Manjit Wollstone Home Fund supports um, community groups who work with children and young people in disadvantaged areas of Bradford district, um, enabling them to achieve their potential through educational and aspirational opportunities. So this fund was established in memory of Manjit Wollstone Home, who was the first woman from an ethnic minority background to chair a FTSE 100 company. And the fund focuses on building skills and perseverance um, and aims to break down barriers that prohibit young people from succeeding in business. So as such, uh, grant proposals and projects should increase educational, training and employment opportunities that are available for young people. And your activity should enable young people to make informed choices about their next steps, whether that be in education and learning or in employment. Um, and the activity should dispel misconceptions about what young people can achieve and, and what is possible for them. So activities should be focused on young people up to the age of 21 uh, and can also extend to sort of parents, carers, family members who influence um, these young people. And some examples of past activity which has been which have been funded include um, 
youth led sessions exploring confidence building and um, things about building successful and healthy relationships and healthy living. And um, we've also had a series of educational STEM sessions and um, widening understanding and participation in STEM subjects in higher education and STEM is science, technology, engineering and maths. Um, and we've also had a programme of talks from successful Asian female role models um, and groups visiting local universities and colleges so that they can experience and be inspired to study um, in higher education. So all proposals um, should demonstrate that the project will be delivering aspirational youth focused work. Um, and yep, as said, if you're interested in applying, we would encourage you to read the criteria fully and start an application soon. Um, funding decisions for this programme will be made in November um, with a view to grants going out to groups around December time and um, just to give you an idea of the timeline. So the next fund is the Leeds Fund micro grants. Um, this one isn't open yet, but it operates on a quarterly cycle. Um, so it is regularly open throughout the year. So you'll have multiple opportunities to apply. And the next round is going to be in October. Um, and the process is that we accept applications throughout the month and then the round closes on the final day of the final working day of the month. So this time round, it will be Friday, the 31st of October at 12 noon, as with all our grants. So we've recently made some changes to this um, recurring fund and updated our criteria. And the key change to note is that we are no longer giving grants to individuals um, and we're only giving grants to groups at this time. And we've also updated it slightly so that there are now two strands to this fund with both kickstart grants and development grants. So our kickstart micro grants are really small pots of funding um, to support the first steps of a new group or project and they are for unconstituted groups. So unconstituted means that you don't have a document uh, to explain the purpose of your group and how you're organised. Um, so these grants are focused on those kind of more informal and, and newer groups. Um, you, you've got to have an income of under 2,500 to apply and a grant is for up to £500. And then the other grant that's available is the development one and these are slightly larger pots of money for more established constituted groups so you do have a document explaining how you're run and um, and you'll probably be sort of on a journey to maybe becoming a registered charity or a charitable company and um, these groups need to have income below seven and a half thousand and a development grant is for between 500 and £1,500. So both of these grants are for Leeds groups only um, and the themes are the same for both of them. So proposals for funding must demonstrate that your activity or project will improve the lives of people in your communities through volunteer led activities which make a positive difference. Um, and so the the fund is quite broad, not very prescriptive, uh, and it doesn't have a, a specific focus. We, we know that you know what's best for your community, um, and we do welcome applications to support all different members of the community, including children, families, older people, um, members of the LGBTQ plus community, refugees and asylum seekers, and disabled people. It's really open in terms of who it can work with. Um, and a range of activities can be funded, but the often projects um, are linked to things such as health and wellness or enriching experiences or building safe um, and friendly communities. So you might apply for a grant to fund activity to address physical and mental health, such as a local support group or that enables exercise or perhaps um, 
activity that could encourage learning and support people in gaining life skills or employability skills or also creative solutions to local issues um, such as an arts and crafts group that uses uh, reclaimed materials destined for landfill to make new items or activity that brings members of the community together to improve social connection. Um, but this is an, an exhaustive list um, and we welcome all sorts of different ideas. Um, that's it from me, thank you. Okay, we can move into Q&A. If you want to stop sharing screen, please. I think there's been a few questions in the chat, but I think we've answered them all in the thread as we were going along. But if anybody does have any questions, then now's the time to ask. Just unmute and ask away. No? Looks like it must have been a really informative presentation by everybody. Got all the information that you needed. I mean, if there, if there are any questions while, while you're completing the form, as I did mention earlier, do get in touch with us. We're quite ha happy to um, talk to you about your project idea. If you're not quite sure about eligibility criteria or anything like that, just give us a quick bell and um, we'll be happy to discuss it. We're here to help, not to trip people up. Okay. Okay, looks like there's no questions, so I'm going to call it a day there. Thanks very much for joining everybody and uh, good luck with your applications. <laughs>